Hello, friends, and welcome to Sleep Tight Stories. I'd like to say happy birthday to Savannah, who is celebrating her birthday on November 21st. A very happy birthday to you. I hope your day is very special. This is part two of our story about Red, the transfer student. If you listen to the first part, you know that Red is going to her new school for the first time. She has moved to a new place and had to isolate, so she is starting late and not looking forward to her first day of school. She doesn't like the colors she sees around her and her trip on the bus is awful. When Red arrives at school, she goes to the principal's office and then finally to her new classroom. Red finds her seat near Charlie and then later needs to get up and introduce herself to the class. This is when things start to go wrong. The Transfer Student, Part 2 Do you remember a time when you blurted out a word that you weren't supposed to? Or a word spoken at an inappropriate time? How did it feel? And how did people react? Red knew she wasn't supposed to say the word that there was a carefully crafted story about where she was from. It just came out. She sometimes just couldn't help herself. But now it was too late and the classroom was full of laughter. She said it. Still, she couldn't understand why everyone was laughing at her. Literally everyone was laughing. Even the teacher had a smirk on her face. It's like they didn't believe her. But she always told the truth. Mars is a place. Well, there is a town in Pennsylvania called Mars at least. Her mother always told her to be honest. That honesty was the best policy. Her father used to always repeat so much that Red's eyes would start to roll each time she heard it. That honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom, or something like that. And yet here I am telling the truth, and all I get is laughter in return. Ugh. Now class, settle down, Mrs. Johnson yelled. I'm sure Red is just telling a joke. Isn't that right, Red? Mmm, yeah, mumbled Red, whose face was so rosy that it felt like it was on fire. I like to tell jokes. There is no place called Mars, except in Pennsylvania. Everyone should just forget about it, she added sheepishly. Okay, class, we'll get another opportunity to get to know our new classmate during story sherry time tomorrow, Mrs. Johnson said with a smirk. Maybe we can all tell funny stories. Now, let's open our math textbooks to page 25 and continue where we left off from last time. The class collectively groaned and all eyes left red as they all opened their textbooks as dramatically as they possibly could. Red opened her math book and realized that it was all problems she had solved before. And though math was Red's favorite subject, she found herself daydreaming and not listening to the teacher at all. She was thinking back to her life at her former school. Her friends, the grayness, 
the glorious red soil. The pancakes. Red squirmed as she daydreamed. Why do we have to sit in these uncomfortable seats? At her former school, they would all sit on comfy cushions in a circle on the floor and listen to the teacher as she taught the lesson. Then they would solve the problems together as a team. She would always sit beside Horatio and Solomon, her best friends in the world. They were in every class together, would work out the problems together, and play in the outer rings together. The sound of Charlie's sneezing watery mucus into the front of his t-shirt broke her from her reverie. Yuck. At lunch, Red made her way through the sea of kids crowding the hallways to the harshly lit large concrete room where the school forced the kids to sit and eat. No sun had ever shone on the inside of this place. As she walked in, there were few places left to sit, and by the looks on everyone's face, she wasn't welcome to sit by them. She could feel the other students' eyes on her and hear their whispers. Mars. Funny clothes. Silly. Floated through the air like the flies she discovered for the first time when she arrived at this new place. She sat alone. That is until, without saying a word, Rachel sat in front of her. How she managed to sit there without spilling her lunch amazed Red. As she navigated the difficult bench seats, she was reading in one hand a huge book open somewhere near to the end, and in the other a tray full of disgusting-looking food, which Red guessed was the chicken nuggets, corn, and pears that the principal mentioned earlier during announcements. On the side was a huge cup of hot tea, which looked like it might spill at any moment. Be careful! Red said in alarm. Rachel said nothing, and judging by the look of concentration on her face, didn't hear anything Red said as she sat down and continued reading. Without looking up, Rachel asked, You really from Mars? Because if you are, I would totally believe it. Mmm, yes. Rachel stuttered. Mars, Pennsylvania, she quietly added. Hmm, that's cool. We don't get many new faces around here. Most people were born here and few people come here on purpose, Rachel said. And we especially don't see many with as keen a fashion sense as yours. Keen fashion sense? What's wrong with my clothes? I'll tell you, these were the most popular fashions on, uh, in my hometown, said Red indignantly. Not looking up from her book, Rachel replied, Oh, there is nothing wrong with your clothes. They are just different is all. What's wrong with being different? asked Red. Nothing. Being different is great, but not everyone thinks the same way because they are, well... They're different, Rachel said. Ugh. Looking up briefly, Rachel asked, What's that you are eating for lunch? Pancakes. Glorious pancakes. My mother makes me pancakes at least once a day, Red said with a sparkle in her eye. You're lucky. My mother doesn't know how to cook. One day she tried to cook spaghetti and almost burned the house down, Rachel said with a sigh. My father tries, but I get tired of nut butter sandwiches, she added. Well, I guess we better get back to class, Red said in an attempt to change the subject. 
Red walked behind Rachel, amazed that she could continue to stare at her book without running into someone as they walked together to their next class. English with Mr. McCaskill. All right, Mr. McCaskill said. We are going to start a new novel called The Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. But first, I have a question for you. What did one ocean say to the other ocean? He asked. The class groaned. Ugh. Nothing. They just waved. Much to the astonishment of the whole class, Mr. McCoskill included, Red laughed out loud. Everyone stared at her in silence. Ugh. The rest of the day was uneventful. Classes came and went. No one asked her where she came from. No one looked at what she was wearing. She was happy to be ignored. And unfortunately, none of her other teachers had Mr. McCaskill's glorious sense of humor. The classes seemed boring, with science introducing topics that she had covered years ago. And finally, the bell rang and it was time to get the bus which would deliver her to the freedom of her bedroom. Again, she sat at the back of the bus, and again, when the bus hit a bump, she hit her head. Ugh. The bus delivered her to the front of her house, which Red thought took an eternity. She had to sit close to Charlie again, and she was thankful that she could pull her hoodie down over her face. Charlie seemed to be sneezing everywhere. As she got off the bus, she noticed that there was a strange black car in the driveway. Government plates. There was a strange air of seriousness as she walked in the house. Usually, she would go immediately to her room, unless there was a smell of freshly baked cookies. But she hesitated. She was curious who might be visiting. Red, her mom called, please come into the kitchen. As Red walked towards the kitchen, she noticed two mountainous people dressed completely in black suits, black hats, and wearing black sunglasses. The larger of the two, a woman with arms twice the size of Red's legs, stood there motionless. The other, a man, stood there with a large forced smile with impeccably white teeth. Red, her mother said anxiously, we need to talk. And that is the end of this part of the story. Good night. Sleep tight.